Hello, my name is Rebecca Ricks and I'm here with the Homeschool Connection and I'm just having my afternoon cup of coffee which is really good by the way and I'm just going to take a real quick few minutes and talk to you a little bit about learning styles for middle schoolers and high schoolers and I'm going to make sure I check my clock here so that I only take five minutes of your time and to get that done so when I first started teaching which was 20 years ago this year um, we really only talked about four basic learning styles but now we've kind of expanded and say that there are seven learning styles and you can have more than one learning style so we'll kind of go through those really quickly and talk about them and how they affect high schoolers so sometimes as a teacher we usually teach in the learning style that we learn from because that's what we relate to most most so sometimes um, if you notice that that's why some students relate or connect with certain teachers better than others it's because they're teaching using that learning style the first one I really want to talk to you about is a visual learning learner or we also call that a spatial learner um, so they really like pictures and images and that type of learning um, they want to be able to see it so as a math teacher a lot of students like to watch you work those math problems okay so they're not necessarily going to sit and copy it down they're going to watch you do it they need to see you do a problem or um, a lot of times they like to have charts or pictures in a book a visual learner can usually pick up how to do a math problem I've noticed in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 even from watching the steps in a book so some can do that and some can't the second is an auditory or a musical or an aerial learner so you prefer listening to do it um, sounds and music so they might can learn anything if there's music going to it we're behind in the background um, there are people who learn when music is going on in the background so there's music playing and they can learn better that way that drives me personally crazy I can't learn what there's music going on in the background but they prefer that way they really want to be able to hear it so if you're telling them something even if they're writing it down they want to be able to hear you say the steps so a hint would be if I'm teaching math not just writing on the board but I like to say what I'm writing as I do it so I would say okay y equals mx plus b so instead of y I'm going to put a 2 they really can learn by you saying it out loud as you're doing it um, and students might do that then there's a verbal or a linguistic learner so they really prefer speech and writing and using words they're going to be your writers the people who can take it and actually put it onto paper put words onto paper which is not my personal strength I can't always do that I can't always be a verbal learner I can't take my words and put it into writing but they would do that and then of course you have your physical um, ones who want to use their hands and their senses as we're moving into middle school and high school we're usually getting away from doing more hands-on learning so how can someone who is a physical learner learn better um, in math classes a lot of time they'll be the ones who want to write every single thing down they might be an avid note taker not necessarily because they're a visual learner but because really that writing it down is how they remember it I remember hearing people say repetition is the key to learning so there are people who have to write it they actually the more physical things you do with your hands that's a way and as we're getting into these harder subjects that would be another uh, way to do it so kind of a newer, newer um, another style of learning would be logical or mathematical someone who really likes to have steps that would be me um, I like to have a step for everything when I teach English or diagramming I say step one do this find your subject step two ask who or what I like to have specific steps a very logical learner now not everyone learns that way steps make some people crazy but for me I like to have step one you do this step two you do this step three you do this um, then you can have a social learner someone who prefers groups I love study groups love them but I don't learn really well in a study group a study group for me is party time but there are people who will really learn in those study groups um, when they get together they're learning and they can hear it and they need that interaction with someone else ever have your students say come and quiz me on this 
They learn from someone quizzing them. They learn from a flashcard or someone physically asking them that question. So they're usually a social and an auditory learner, kind of mixed together. And then there's a solitary, solitary, solitary learner who to prefer to work alone in self-study. And I feel like that's also me. Um, I have to sit down and focus specifically on my... Um, on what I am learning. I have to stop and really pay attention and study it in quiet. If there's anything else going around, um, on around me, I get super distracted. So that's kind of your really quick, my timer just went off, your five minutes of really quick, your seven types of learners. So I'm going to tag below um, some quizzes that you can take for you or your student can take to kind of figure out what kind of, kind of learner you are. So remember, most people are two and sometimes even three parts of it. So you have your visual, your auditory, your verbal, your physical learner, logical, social, and then our solitary, the ones that have to learn alone. Hopefully that was a little bit of help again I um, would love if you liked and shared with us but go ahead and put uh, look on later and I will go ahead and add a couple of those quizzes that you can go on and look and see what kind of learner you are hope you all have a great day remember you're not alone if you need any help with your homeschooling we are here for you